Hello and welcome everyone to the Week Ahead Commodity Report for the 28th of May to the 1st of June 2018 where we will be reviewing the commodity markets for the week ahead. So over the last week we have certainly seen some big movements here in commodities, most notably gold prices breaking back above 1,300 US dollars per ounce and also crude oil on Friday dropping by over 4% to the downside providing some great trading opportunities now as we go into next week there are several high impact news items which you need to pay attention to one of those is going to be next friday's non-farm payroll data we'll have a look at that in more detail when we go over to the charts and the expectations so before we do so let's just dive a little bit deeper into the price action here that we've seen into the close on Friday. So first of all, it is worth noting that oil has had a very significant decline to the downside on Friday. We've seen over a 4% move here off the back of Saudi Arabia and Russia discussing raising OPEC and non-OPEC oil production by 1 million barrels per day. So we saw a media impact on oil prices on Friday where we saw a significant breakdown in price. In fact, I'll bring over the chart here. So Brent crude oil, you can see down over 3% on the day, but WTI crude oil broke down 4.49% on Friday. This very significant sell short opportunity over the course of the US session on Friday which picked up momentum after we broke below Thursday's low in the morning here on Friday as well so if we go back to what we're looking at as we go into next week well on Friday we had the US drillers oil rig count as well into the close too and that showed again an increase in the amount of oil rigs so essentially US energy companies added the most oil rigs in both a week and a month since February so into the close on Friday we've seen another shift lower here in oil prices now it's interesting to note from the commitment of traders data that hedge funds and money managers have now raised their bullish bets on US crude oil futures and options in the latest week after four consecutive cuts in their net long position so the big question going into next week is whether we are going to see a continuation to the downside here or whether this is a perfect opportunity to buy oil at a significant discount given the fact that just three or four days ago oil broke out to four year highs and of course it's now had a significant decline almost six percent move to the downside over the last week and we're getting back within a sweet spot and potential buy zone here for both Brent crude oil and WTI crude oil. I'll show you that on the chart actually. You can see that very clearly where we're right at the lower end of the trend channel where it is a bit of a decision time here for oil going into next week because at this zone if we do break through support here we could see another revisit taking the price of Brent crude oil here back down towards 75 US dollars per barrel. If we hold at this level, it may provide an opportunity to actually get in at a better price on this recent pullback. So we'll be having a look at that very closely as we go into next week. We'll be watching out also for Wednesday's crude oil inventory data, which can be a big catalyst for trade opportunities. So last week, the crude oil inventory data showed a oversupply with gasoline and also crude oil inventories. And that helped to cause this breakdown in price that we started to see midweek. But that's also caught additional momentum to the downside here over the course of Friday's US session too and we also want more clarity regarding OPEC and Russia considering an output boost because this has been a catalyst on Friday for a breakdown in price with oil falling more than two dollars a barrel as Saudi Arabia and Russia discussed easing production cuts that have helped push crude oil prices to their highest level since 2014 so oil will definitely be a market to watch as we go into next week and the trade opportunities given the significant set-off that we've seen into the close here on Friday now if we go over to the metals gold as we discussed last week has had this rebound in price from very oversold levels in fact, we broke down to around 1,280 US dollars at the beginning of last week, but that was in fact a false break of support, turned out to be a bear trap in the sense that gold broke down through support and then turned around very quickly. We saw this midweek, in fact, after the minutes of the FOMC, where we then subsequently saw a breakout on Thursday, taking the price back above 1,300 US dollars. As I'd mentioned previously, gold at these levels, very oversold. The gold to silver ratio also had hit 80 to 1 going back towards the end of April, which very commonly does signify a low for gold and silver prices. And we've continued to see the price get well supported 
around 1,280 US dollars over the last week, leading into a V-shaped reversal pattern breakout here on Thursday. You can see we've seen a bit of a pullback here on Friday as well into the close, but ultimately gold has held above 1,300 US dollars per ounce here into the close on Friday. But of course, we want to see whether gold will continue to follow through next week or if we're just going to come into overhead resistance here, which we've seen several times now during this downward trending channel and whether we're going to just rotate lower here and revisit back below 1300s and potentially come back towards the recent swing lows as well. So what we need to consider here on gold going into next week, well, the net long positions from hedge funds has been trimmed again. So it's at the smallest in 10 months here. So hedge funds and money managers have cut their net long positions in Comics Gold contracts. So that's worth bearing in mind given where gold price is sitting at the moment so it's still vulnerable at this zone for a potential move lower if it cannot hold above 1300 us dollars going into next week but at the moment we seem to have formed a short-term low and in actual fact if we go over to the weekly chart as well you can see where we've again found support at major channels here on gold which take you all the way back towards the end of 2016 we've come for a revisit back towards the lower end of this channel where we're getting some support here and certainly on the, a weekly closing basis we do have a positive close here for gold so I'm going to be watching the price action very closely as we go into next week to see if we will get more follow through gold prices did pull back as we got closer to the close on Friday after we saw a breakout up to 1307 US dollars per ounce dropping as a result also not only off the back of the US dollar breaking back out to five month highs but also in investors digesting news of US President Donald Trump saying a meeting with North Korea leader could still go ahead. So with that, we've seen some profit taking here into the close on Friday with gold. Now, I would also certainly keep an eye on silver. If we have a look at silver price structure, we are essentially in a range bound market. We are seeing dips back towards $16 per ounce as great buying opportunities, but also breakouts back towards $16.70 an ounce as levels to be taking profit at the moment whilst we still continue to ricochet between these levels of support and resistance that's very clear levels on the chart at the moment what silver would need to do in order to really break free of this recent consolidation would be to break and close back above resistance here which resides between $16.70 per ounce up to around $16.90 that is a key level that silver needs to break out from and close above in order to see the momentum continue to the upside and then we could start this run up higher back towards the swing highs here from mid-April. It was worth noting that over the course of the last week, silver priced in euros did break out to four-month highs. So it seems to be more a result of US dollar strength here over the course of Friday's US session, causing this pullback on silver priced in US dollars versus silver priced in other currencies. So I want to see next week whether we will hold up after this recent breakout and support just above $16. So we closed here at $16.45 per ounce on Friday, right within the middle of the range at the moment. And again, this is a great market for trading the range currently on silver. So essentially buying at the lower end of the range, taking profit at the upper end of the range. And if you're brave, you could even look for sell short opportunities around resistance here, which resides at the 1670 zone at the moment, taking those trade opportunities from lower timeframes. Platinum has also been very lucrative to take advantage of dips back below $900. So over the course of Tuesday and Wednesday last week, we saw a breakout all the way back up to $914. That was after a false break of support earlier on in the week, which took the price back towards the December swing lows from 2017, back towards $885. So we saw a temporary break of support, a false break, a bear trap, essentially a capitulation move earlier in the week, which is on Monday. And we saw good follow through after the minutes of the FOMC. And we've got a, a pause in price right now. We've come back down towards $900 here. If you have a look at Platinum on the weekly chart as well, it's a little bit more clear where we've come all the way back down to major support. We have essentially closed back above $900 on a weekly closing basis. And again, you've got a very range bound market here on Platinum where we've been moving between $900 up to $1,033 here throughout 
throughout the last two years. So at this point, we're right at the lower end of the range, the accumulation zone here for platinum. And as I've mentioned before, the platinum to gold ratio is the most extreme it has ever been at the moment. So relative to gold prices, platinum is the cheapest it has ever been. And we're currently right back at support around $900. So I want to see whether we will hold above $900 going into next week and whether we get a continuation pattern to the upside and potentially break above a lot of this overhead resistance at the moment on platinum or whether it's just going to be simply a rotation lower here break back below the weekly lows here from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday last week and then revisit back below $900 and potentially come to retest the swing lows as well from last week. So we'll be watching out for the price action here on platinum going into next week as well. Now, of course, the US dollar does need to be watched very closely here. So the strength of the US dollar into the close here on Friday has meant we've essentially back at the five month highs and we've broken above all of this resistance. And you've got to be very careful here if you've been looking to try and pick a top on the US dollar because yet again here we've seen another pullback get bought back into over Thursday here you can see we've come back into underlying support and essentially the US dollar index has gained support here yet again for the US dollar index into the close on Friday it's actually the strongest close here since mid-November and of course we've seen commodity linked currencies falling against the US dollar here as well with the continued strength dollar strength of course would negatively impact commodity currencies such as the Australian dollar US dollar or the New Zealand dollar US dollar which have pulled back into the close here on Friday going into next week and especially Friday's non-farm payroll the dollar will be key here so into the close on Friday the dollar index closed at the highest level since mid-November and that's of course significant here given the impact that that has had on a number of commodity currencies as well and also the pullbacks that we've seen on gold silver on platinum into the close on Friday and also we've seen continued momentum to the downside with oil of course breaking down over 4.5% on Friday too. Now, of course, if you'd like to join us at the Gold and Silver Club for our non-farm payroll preparation sessions and get access to the exact trades that we will be taking as well at the Gold and Silver Club and also get access to our custom-built market data and news trading platform. If you would like to find out more and, of course, join us for our live trading room program at the Gold and Silver Club, all you need to do is go to www.gold.com join the live trading room.com the link is also in the description just below this video which you can click on and make an application via the direct link too and of course make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel as well so that you get the latest developments and reports in the commodity markets